Today we're going to paint a baby owl. Stick around until the end of this lesson so you can see what we're going to paint next time. Today we're going to paint a baby owl and I went on the internet to find a model to use and here's the photograph I picked. Take your spray bottle, spray your pans of paint and put some water in your palette. So from this photograph I made a template and here is my template. I'm putting it in the middle of the page about right there. Let's take our liner brush, wet it, and load it with yellow ochre, and trace the L. And load your brush as needed. I needed a little more paint there. Now I had some of the black run, but I'm not going to worry. This is an easy fix. And sometimes you might call that a happy accident. I'm going to fade these lines here, not make them so strong. And part of the reason that happened was the ink ran on the template. So you might want to use a pencil. But the thing with watercolor that I like is you can work with it. You know, sometimes just things happen and you just work with it. And it, it's kind of fun, some of the things that happen. They're magical. And so I'm just going to add some of this into my composition. Your composition is not going to look exactly like mine. And that's okay. We're all unique, wonderful, loving human beings. Let's fade these lines a little more. Like that for now. Okay, that's pretty good. All right, now you might want to keep the photograph close to you so you can just look at it for reference. Now, let's work on the eyes of the owl. We're going to use some lemon yellow. Brush and add some lemon yellow. The eyes are about right here and we're going to make a circle like a donut shape about right here now we're going on to doing the nose and the nose or the beak rather has some yellow on it and let's put that right in the middle and it looks like a little bit has a hook to it, like that. Okay, let's leave it like that. Now let's switch brushes for a moment and work on the lower part of the owl. I wanted the yellow to have time to dry. So pick up your round with pointed tip brush and we are going to work on the lower part of the L. Now the color is brown with a little bit of gray. So let's make a mixture of burnt sienna on our palette. 
with burnt umber. Need to wet my brush a little more. And put a touch of ultramarine blue. You don't need much. The blue is pretty strong. And you can test it on your paper towel. That's about right for now. Now I'm going to add a little water to my brush and I have paint on it. And let's start right here and put some brown where the wing is. I want to water that down. I want to create a, a wash here. Now this owl has some white spots. So I want to leave some white spots on this wing here. So you want to create some white spots here. Let's bring this down there. Come around here. Bring it down. That's pretty good. Now let's take some of that color and go along here. Now this part sticking out is going to be part of the foot, the claw of the owl. And it's going to be darker in color. So I'm going to go back to that spot later. Let's fade this a little bit. Bring some of that color up around here. Now, and down along here, like that. Now this owl has some white along here. So you could use white paint, but I'm choosing to use the white paper. We'll blot that a little bit to lighten that. And let's bring some of that brown over here. And don't you don't want to get too close to the yellow. There, that's better. And then bring it up and around here. and make an arch around the eyes. Because there's going to be some white. Come here and around, down around the eye, leaving some white. And again, there's some of that white about right here. So I'm going to leave that and then put some of the brown around the beak. Now the yellow is dried enough that the paints will not rut, and that's what I want. And then bring some of that brown up here around the nose like that, down around the nose, back here, down here, Bring it down here. Let's join this part here. And the this is creating a layer. You can see a lighter color and it's creating a darker one. And I'm just putting some splashes. The faint impression of feathers. I want this to cover. It's a bit too white there like that. That's looking pretty good. Let's give it a good dry before we continue. Okay, now let's add some dark areas. There's light to medium and now we need to add that dark light layer. Pick up your round with pointed tip brush 
Let's use both the browns and a little bit more of that blue. I want some of that blue to show so it's more of a grayish dark black color. And let's put some a little bit of above the head here like that there's some dark peeking out there bring some around here just some little spots like that now let's with this dark color go around the yellow I like that. Do it on both sides there. Like that. Now we're going to make the dark circle in the middle. Like that. And another one on the other side like that. Now let's add I'm dipping my brush in water just to dilute some of the color. If it's not enough, you can add some more. And let's spread some of that dark color. I want it not to be so much paint, more water. And put some spots here, along here, like that. And you'll find with watercolor is you don't need much, a little bit can go a long way. Just add a little more, thin that out, like that. And then bring some here. I want to thin that out a little more. Just make creating some depth, some variation on the fuzzy little feathers that are forming in this baby owl, like that. That's looking pretty good. Let's add a little on this side here. A little more over here, like that. And a bit under this eye, like that. Then always stop and pause. I'm looking at that, and that's looking pretty good. Now I need some of that darkness here. This is a little bit too faded to me as I look at it. So still using my round with pointed tip brush. Need to make more of this mixture. The wing here is a little bit darker. So with your liner, let's create this mixture using our burnt sienna, burnt umber, and ultramarine blue. And put some on the wing here. Spreading that paint like that. Just a little bit everywhere. Let's put some on the bottom here. Like that. A little more here. This seems a little dark. Just going to wipe my brush and lift some of that paint off. Like that. It's a little too distracting. When you look at your painting and if your attention is drawn to a certain spot, then that area needs to be worked on. Maybe it needs to be lighter or darker. And the, the fun thing with watercolor is you can play with that. Water will reactivate it. And you can dab some of that color out or put more color in. Okay, so now we need to use this mixture of right here with a claw. Just like that. It has some little fluffy feathers covering it, so you, like that. So you don't want it too definite. It's just starting to 
begin the full form. Okay, let's give it a good dry and stop for a moment. All right. Now that this area is dry, I'd like to go back and make it darker. Again, using my liner with a mixture of burnt sienna, burnt umber, and a bit of blue, ultramarine blue. Just want it a little bit darker. And let's go back and put some more on the eyes here. Make that a little darker. Like that. That's better. Okay. Let's switch brushes to our round with pointed tip brush. And we're going to make a branch that this baby owl is sitting on. This is too dark. So. I'm going to change the color by just adding some burnt sienna and make it back to more of a brownish color like that. And let's start down here and make the branch come about right here. Now this paint is a little bit wet, so I don't want to have the paint run, so I'm going to wait or be very careful when I'm working around that area. And just make the impression of sitting on a log there like that. So let's add some dark areas to that. So I think that that shade is a little bit too light. So I'm going to use my mixture burnt sienna, burnt umber, and add some of that blue. I want it to be a little darker. That looks like it's darker. Let's give it a test here. Yeah, that's better. That's about another shade darker. I think that looks pretty good. Now let's work on the background. Now, of course, you could always keep it like this if that's what your preference is. But I'm going to go on and show you how you can add a little background. Again, we're doing the vignette style and I'm not going to fill the whole page. So let's make some branches in the background. About like that. Maybe one over here. Just like that. Now let's give this a good dry before we continue. Now let's make the background. In the background, still continuing to use our round with pointed tip brush, I'm going to clean mine. And I have some yellow ochre 
on this palette here, and that's okay. I put a little more and add some sap green. I think sap green is one of my favorite colors of the greens. Now let's put some green trees in the background here. The impression of some leafy trees here. Go along here like that. Need to mix more color. That's a little darker. I think I like that a little darker. Now it might fade out the trees and you can go back and adjust that. But you know, it's good to let ideas soak or let areas soak and not overwork them. And what helps me to do that is to go to a different part of the painting and then come back to it. And just take a moment and take some deep breaths. Don't think about doing your dishes. Just think about the wonderful creation you are making right now. I'm so glad you joined me today. And having some creative fun with watercolors. Let's put a little bit above the head here on the L. Need a little more paint. And like that. And then stop, sit back, and look at it. And you know, there's things you think, oh, I could do this and do that, and then you do it, and sometimes it's like, ah, I don't like that. So take your time. Enjoy the process, creative process. It really relaxes me, and I hope it relaxed you today. I can't wait until the next painting. Join me next time to paint a baby fox. Here is my model that we'll be using. See you then!